name is Tyree Ellison. Uh, I get to lead uh, the incredible Southland region with my beautiful, amazing wife, Jill. And I just welcome you guys again to our Sunday service. Uh, the title of my lesson is uh, Back to the Bible. Okay. Back to the Bible. You know, I was kind of inspired uh, from this movie in the late 80s titled Back to the Future. Some of you guys may be familiar with it. And uh, it had this actor, Michael J. Fox, yeah. who plays Marty McFly. It's a cool name, right? Mr. McFly, right? Yeah. And Christopher Lloyd also was uh, one of the main characters in the movie as well, and he plays Doc. And he's this yeah. big scientist, he does all these different things. And uh, in the movie, Doc creates this time machine. And it's not just a typical time machine. No, this time machine is very stylish. This time machine, uh, he created a time machine out of a DeLorean car. It was the type of car at that time where uh, the, the doors would just open up like a butterfly. So it's like the butterfly doors right there, right? And uh, it's an awesome film. But there's a quote in the movie where Doc says, if you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. And I think it's so true. When you put your mind to something, either it stops you or it propels you to move forward. And it's just really the attitude in your mind. It's a mental thing, it's a mental battle. And for us, at our Bible Talk Expo this Sunday service, we all want cranking and amazing Bible Talks, do we not? Yeah. We all want successful and fruitful Bible Talks, do we not? Yes. Yes. However, we have to understand, in order for the success to happen, yeah, we'll get there, but it all starts with your mind. Mm. Mentally preparing yourself, but also making a decision to excel in the basics. Amen. And I kind of want to talk about that because if you think about a lot of the greats of our time and the people we talk about, like the Kobe Bryants and the, and the Michael Jordans, right? All of these guys excelled at the basics. And it was their mindset. I mean, it was said of the late Kobe Bryant, he was known to have never got bored with the basics. Sometimes we could get bored. Yeah. But Kobe never got bored with just the basics. Michael Jordan once said, Get the fundamentals down, the level of everything you do will rise. Bill Belichick once said, he's a very phenomenal coach, won a lot of championships, and he once said, there are no shortcuts to building a team each season. You build foundation brick by brick. Mm -hmm. And with everything going on in the LA church, and literally just around the movement, uh, it's a lot of transitions, people are getting sent out, people are coming in, and we're going to get caught up in so many different things and stuff going on in our own personal lives. But for this moment, this morning, I want to call us to refocus our hearts on God and get back to the basics. You follow me? Right. Today, I only have two quick points for you guys. And it's to help us get back to the basics so our Bible talks could thrive, so our Bible talks can succeed. Come on. And getting back to the basics is literally just that. Get back to the Bible. Yep. That's simple. There's no fairy dust, there's no magical uh, thing that we can ever do, but yet just make a decision to get back to the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My first point is back to powerful times with God. Let's go to Mark chapter 1. One more Mark chapter 1. Back to powerful times with God. In Mark chapter 1, it's just the day of life of Jesus. And we pick it up here in verse 35, it says, Very early in the morning. While it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. We'll pause right there. This is just amazing. Yeah. It says very early in the morning. Not, it just couldn't be early in the morning. It had to see very early in the morning. <laughs> and while it was still dark, no distractions. Nobody's texting you. Nothing that you want to see on your phone. Nothing. Just you and God. Amen. And it says Jesus spent time with God. And he did it every day. And Jesus made this his top priority in the morning. It wasn't anything else. It wasn't just going off to work. It was like, no, before I even get into my work and before I even get into my schedule, oh my I want to make sure I'm close to God right here. Amen. Right, man. But look at this lifestyle. What type of effect it had on Jesus? Look at Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. And we're just talking about Jesus here. Going back to the basics, look at Jesus in Luke chapter 5. In verse 17 it says, One day Jesus was teaching, and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were sitting there. 
They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Here it says Jesus was teaching. But the type of impact he had on those around him is because he was walking with God. And him walking with God gave him power. And it gave him the strength and the power to do what he had planned to do for that day. And so for a lot of us, we, we take on a lot of responsibilities. Some of us are different uh, places in our lives. Some of us has families. Uh, some of us got to get the kids ready for school. Even summer school now is summer. And we have so many gamma tests coming at us throughout the day. And man, it could be overwhelming, can it not? <laughs> But Jesus, he had power. He was strong because he walked with God. Right. How do we know this? Well, look at the Bible. In verse 16, it says, But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. That's where the power came from. Jesus spent a quality time with his Father in heaven. And the crazy thing about the Bible, it says in verse 16, it says, He often withdrew. Meaning, like, it wasn't a one and done thing. It wasn't just something you do before baptism to get baptized. It wasn't just something you do after baptism just to call yourself a Christian. He's like, no, this was his lifestyle. Mm. And so if this was Jesus' lifestyle, and Jesus is the epitome of what it means to be a Christian, and we look at our lives, can our lives reflect what it says in the Bible? Yeah, is this your lifestyle every single day? Mm. Having powerful times with God. Are you with me? Yeah. You know, I remember when uh, I got baptized about seven years ago, and I was just really excited to just have a true relationship with God based on what the Bible taught, right? And I remember uh, just spending time with God, just getting up super early. I was working in a nonprofit. I was working as a, as a single professional at the time. I had a busy schedule, but yet I was just so excited to spend time with God. I was like, I set my alarm super early. Yeah. I get up, make my little coffee. Uh, you know, I was just ready. And then I started getting like really creative because I didn't want that relationship to kind of become dull. Like any relationship, sometimes you do the same thing and it become a routine and it could get dull and really boring quick. And so I started getting advice from just friends and peers like, hey, how do, you, how do you keep your relationship with God fresh? And so I would just apply those things into my life and my walk with God and I'd do the same thing. I would play music. I didn't even listen to, I don't even listen to jazz like that, but I'll be playing jazz. I have my little candle right there. And I see all the time the sisters Posted on social media like, hey, me and my time with my dad. Or me and my time with, 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 my, with my father. And I'm like, man, you know what? I'm going to do the same thing. You know, like, so I'm like, hey, me and my time with my dad. And just post it. And just having a ball with God. I would get even so creative to the point, going on YouTube, you could type in, like, instrumentals. And I would type, sounds of the beach. Because I was living in San Francisco. It's, it's really, it's beaches, but there's no point of beaches because it's really cold. And so, but I was like, you know what? I'll be sitting on my couch. Sounds of the beach. And you just hear seagulls and the waves. And, and I'm like, you know what? I'm spending time with God. Aww. Just having a Come ball. On, and it was those times when I got the chance to connect. And it was those times when I got the chance to grow and become more and more powerful in the Lord. Because I was spending time with God. And I was making time with God. And this was a lifestyle. But often I remember times when I start to prioritize other things. Yep. And maybe I got it like, oh man, I, I overslept this time, because it happens. I overslept this time, you know what? I'm gonna rush to work and, and kind of barely have a, a, a time with God and right. barely pray and barely read. And you see a clear difference. Yep. And if I was to ask you this morning, when you walked in here to worship God, the creator of the universe, who's outside time, matter, space, who designed you, and call you to just be grateful, to worship. Can you say the same thing? You see what I'm saying? Because I think right now it's a law. And I think, honestly, some of it is because your heart is just jacked up because you haven't been spending powerful times with God. But then some of it, I think, a lot of it is also because you guys have been serving your guts out. I think some of you guys have been serving your guts out. You ought to be commended for it. Right? And it's the things that we call in the movement. It's been sold out. It's because you guys have just been that committed. And it gets draining when you give your heart over and, and over and over, right? I get it. That person is sold out. They're committed. But there's different levels of that too a little bit. You have sold out. And then you also have those who are sold out been married, right? 
Because that's a different ball game too. And then you got those who sold out being married with children. But here's the thing, they're all committed. And I love what Mama Judy shared with me the other day. It's like, you know what? The same race, but just a different pace. Because Mama Judy is a sold out disciple, amen. And for some of us, we just had a different pace in our lives. Like, amen. But still make a decision to have your times with God because anything else is not an excuse. It's not an excuse. Because we're called to be like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Why is this so important? Look over to 2 Chronicles chapter 16. Why is this so important? For us having powerful times with God, not just reading the Bible, but actually applying it, getting into it, asking questions, diving deep. Why is this so important? Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 16. We'll pick it up here, verse 7. It says, At that time, Hananiah the seer, which was like basically a man of God at the time, uh, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, Because you relied on the king of Aram, and not on the Lord your God, the army of the king of Aram has escaped from your hand. Were not the Cushites and Limians a mighty army with great numbers of chariots and horsemen? Yet when you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Wow. You have done a foolish thing. And from now on, you will be at war. Asa was angry with the seer because of this. And he was so enraged that he put him in prison. At the same time, Asa brutally oppressed some of the people. The events of Asa's reign from beginning to end are written in the book of kings of Judah and Israel. In the 39th year of his reign, Asa was afflicted with a disease in his feet. Though his disease was severe, even in the illness, he did not seek help from the Lord, but only from the physicians. Then, in the 40 first year of his reign, Asa died and rested with his ancestors. Powerful times with God. You see, King Asa, just for a little bit of context here, King Asa was one of the kings of Judah. And he thrived. He was walking close with God. He started off very strong. He would put things in order and get the, the, the tear down the, the, the idolatry of the time and just having peace in the kingdom yeah. because of his obedience. And God gave him great success. But yet, however, as things was going good in Asa's life, he started to kind of put God on the back burner. And sometimes that can happen. We all want God when things are going wrong, but soon when things are going good in your life, you get that job that God gave you. Now you put God on the back burner. Oh, that God gave you maybe that spouse that, that wasn't really looking for you probably back a couple of years ago, but because God determined and moved in that person's heart, amen, she fell in love with you, or amen, he fell in love with you. And now God's blessed your life, but yet you still can put God on the back burner. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 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 And so the priorities start to shift. It stopped being about God and it started being about other things. Yeah. And he began to rely on himself, his own intellect, his own skills, his own decisions. Because think about it, he's been successful up until this point. And now he can make a decision like, you know what? God is with me, right? I don't have to really uh, follow God right here. He's with me. Because he was with him. But yet, we see Asa, towards the end of his life, Begin to deteriorate spiritually. Why? Yeah. Because he stopped seeking help from the Lord. Just simple as that. And I eat, what would we tie that for our day and age? What do we call that? Someone who just stopped missing and stopped having quiet times. Someone who just made a decision, you know what? Well, God is with me. I go to church, right? Yeah. I'm part of the City of Angels International Christian Church, right? Yeah. I got baptized years ago, right? I'm five, ten years in the faith, and all it takes is for you to just stop having quiet times. Yeah. And then that becomes your lifestyle. And then that becomes your habit. And then rather than having times with God every single day like you did when you first got baptized, mm -hmm. now it's once a week. Uh, or for some, not even none at all. And you start to find yourself drifting and drifting and drifting. Mm -hmm. Right. And here's the thing. You can't fake true Christianity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You cannot fake true Christianity. Yeah. Here's the thing. We know who you are. Yeah. But ultimately, God sees it. Yeah. And that's the thing you should be more afraid about. Right. Yeah. But here's the thing. Asa started out a good race, but he finished wrong. And for us, we can learn from the, the bad examples in the Bible as well. Amen. So it won't become our life story, right? right? 
that we can make a decision to start off strong, but also finish stronger. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, I just have a challenge for you guys. Because Asa, the last nine years of his life, he didn't make it. How sad would it be? Yes, you was a Christian for the first year. Yes, you made it five years. That's the milestone. Yes, you made it 10 years faithful. 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, or whatever it may be. But yet, the last week, or the last month, or the last year, or the last couple of years, you didn't make it. Wow. wow. That would be terrible. Mm -hmm. And so for you, if you're here this morning, and you know where you're at with God, I want to call you to repent. Yeah. I want to call you as my brother and sister because I love you enough to still tell you the truth mm -hmm. and just change your priorities. Mm -hmm. Get back to the basis. Get back to the Bible so you can actually have right strength from God so you can be powerful and do the work of God so you can change your Bible talks that can change your communities, that can change the world. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. And here's the thing, if you are guests here and you don't know what that looks like living the life of God and try to be consistent, because I get it, life does happen. Get with the person that invited you out. Study the Bible. Some of your friends even got a, a busy life, but they figured out a way to prioritize God in their life and look at their life now. And if you don't know what that looks like, get with the person that invited you out and study the Bible. Amen? Amen. Point number two, back to radical growth. Look at John chapter three. We're just getting back to the basics. And we got to excel in the basics. Amen? Amen? If we want to see our Bible talks thrive this year and do, uh, allow God to do incredible things in our lives, we got to get back to the basics by getting back to the Bible. Look at John chapter 3. And again, we're just looking at Jesus' life because he's the epitome of what it means to be a true Christian. In John chapter 3, we see Jesus with his guys, and in verse 22, we pick it up here. It says, after this, meaning something happened before, right? So the thing that happened before is, is Jesus is interacting with this religious guy. And this religious guy is like, had no idea, yes, he was a, a guy who knew a lot of scripture, but his heart was not changed. Mm. Yeah. And so after all of this, and Jesus just lays it out simple, like, dude, you're not right with God. You need to uh, get into the kingdom, all these different things. And the light that came into the world was actually me. And guess what? <laughs> you got to give a response to this. Mm -hmm. And it's not enough to just be religious. And it says, after all of this, Verse 22, it says, Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside where he spent some time with them and baptized. We got to get back to radical growth. Amen. Here it says Jesus spent time with his disciples. He, he, it was an association. They walked together. They trained together. They spent time. They were a family. And that's what our Bible talk should be. It should be a family. Amen. amen. You have your, your, your Bible talk leader. And that Bible talk leader should be discipling at least or mentoring people within that Bible talk. So they got to have a hold of it, but also that everyone needs can be taken care of. Yeah. Why? Because we're a family. Yeah. Don't we do that in our physical family? We make sure if someone yeah. gets ill or someone is uh, having a bad day, we're encouraging them to stand in their lives. Yeah. Why? Because we're a family. And we see Jesus, he wasn't just spending time with these guys, just laughing up a storm, just eating uh, breakfast and bacon and pancakes, whatever it may be, and just having a, a kumbaya moment. No. His priorities were still focused on an ultimate purpose, which was to seek and save a lost and dying world. But still having fun while doing it, <laughs> right? Yeah. Still having fun while doing it. And he was teaching his guys to do likewise. They baptized together. They impacted people's lives. Yeah. And we also learned that someone else was also baptizing. Look at back at the text. Look at verse 23. Who else was baptizing during this time? It says, now John also was baptizing at Elanon, near Salim, because there was a plenty of water and people were coming and being baptized. This was before John was put in prison. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, meaning teacher, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, referring to Jesus, the one you testified about, look! He is baptizing, and everyone is going to him. So we see here John the Baptist. He was also baptizing. He was a man of God as well. He was, still, he was there to prepare the way for, obviously, Jesus and his ministry. But we see the only one that was baptizing at this time was John. He was the most effective teacher at that time period. He was the prophet. He was the man of God. And just imagine this for a second. John the Baptist baptizing. That's how I got his name, right? He's baptizing. And then he had these, all these people 
just inspired by the words he's speaking because he was bringing people back to the Bible. Amen. You follow? Right. And they were like, oh, wow, he's talking about the kingdom. We, we, we read about this. We talk, and, he's, and he's putting it all together in the Old Testament and mentioning it with the New Testament and talking about, this is it. And so they were inspired and they wanted to get right with God. And so it was a lot of people from different regions, different places, all kind of lining up. Because there's only this one guy baptizing. But think about that. We, we understand the L.A. traffic, do we not? Yeah. Like, really, 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 really understand it, right? But you know how you get that bottleneck, you're trying to exit that off or even enter sometimes? It was sort of like that where he was baptizing, but it wasn't not a lot of workers to also help baptize. It was just John. And so you have these waves of people lining up, and then it looked like, wait, some of John's stuff like, dude, that's the same guy that you baptized on the other side of Jordan, meaning Jesus. Mm -hmm. Guess what? He's baptizing too, and everybody's going over there. Now, it's not a bad thing. It's Jesus. But what was happening is that the people that were lining up, they're like, wait, he's baptizing over here too? They just want to get right with God. Mm -hmm. And so what we learn from this is that we see that Jesus in John 3 and verse 22 spending time with this guy. He's baptizing. We see John the Baptist baptizing. But what was the difference between John's ministry and Jesus' ministry? As we focus on our Bible talks, right? Look at John chapter 4. One more time. Please. Look at verse 1. It says, Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. Whoa. Something happened here. <laughs> like, whoa. whoa. Yeah. Something just happened. Yeah. From John 3 all the way to John 4, something happened in between that. John 3, I was teaching, like, man, it was Jesus spending time with his disciples. And at the time, yeah, Jesus was baptizing. But John 4, Jesus like, dude, awesome. This guy got it. This sister got it. Because it wasn't Jesus baptizing at the time. It was his disciples. Right. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus spent a time with his men and women in his life, he trained them, he taught them to also be just like them. To call him to imitate his effectiveness, his ministry, what his purpose was all about. And guess what? They did just that. And so what happened that the contrast with John the Baptist's ministry, you have this big old line, but only one person baptizing. They ran over there because like, dude, not just one person baptizing, but all of those guys are baptizing. And so it's, it's, a, it's a higher chance that I can too can be saved. And that's what our Bible talks should look like in the mighty Southland region. Amen? Amen. You know, the reason why it's so important is just a, it's just an imitation aspect. Mm -hmm. it's, it's this when the, the student becomes just like his teacher. You know, when I led the campus ministry back in Berkeley at UC Berkeley, uh, I got a chance to lead my own small group, a Bible talk discussion. And at the time, I was still learning and still learning. You're always learning, right? But at the time, I was still learning and training, and I wasn't as effective as I, I wanted to be. And that's fine. I wasn't down. I wasn't discouraged. I was like, okay, I just, I just, gotta, I just need to learn more. That's fine. And so I was very eager. And, and, and a part of it, I, I started to get my uh, spiritual mentor involved in my Bible studies, the people I was getting a chance to meet, and, and the people I wanted to really impact. I was like, you know what? I could do the study, but I really want this guy to really be impacted by the Bible. So I get the people that were effective. Just like Jesus was training his guys. It was Jesus the one that was affected. You follow me? And so I got my spiritual mentor involved. He started doing the Bible studies. And I just watched and I imitated. I learned and I applied myself. It did likewise. So in the Bible studies that I got a chance to lead, man, they were more effective than it was before. Because now I'm not relying on my own strength. I'm just doing the basics. I'm just doing the Bible. And God blessed that unity. Honestly, God blessed the unity to the point where that Bible talk grew and it doubled and it grew. And then when I got a chance to grow in leadership and, and lead a region of my own back in Oakland, I just paid it forward. I took everything that I've learned from my spiritual mentor and my discipler and just laid down the law and taught the people that I was influencing and that I was trying to raise up. Not to become full-time ministry leaders or whatever, but just be disciples. Yeah. <laughs> disciples, we all have an ultimate purpose. What? It's to seek and save a lost world. Yeah. But we all signed up to do that effectively, and we want to. Yeah. The thing that stops us could be pride. The thing that stops us is just a lack of hard work. Yeah. The thing that can stop us is just the lack of imitation. Mm -hmm. And I want to just call us back to the Bible to imitate the <laughs> basics. Amen? Amen. You know, the reason why this is important, I think it's just important to know the condition of the walls in Southland. 
to be honest. When we're talking about growth, like we had a lot of growth when it came to place memberships and it's also to have Daddy Boom, the Colin Wars, and our sister Melita join us in this fight as well, amen? And that's awesome. We got a chance to see a lot of people raise up and go off and do incredible things for God, which is awesome. We got a chance to see some restorations this past year. But honestly, we haven't got a chance to see a lot of baptisms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know they'll come. Yeah. You and I know they'll come on God's time. They'll come. I know that. The Bible says it, right? Yeah. But to be honest, um, the region so far this year only had two baptisms. Mm -hmm. We still got a lot of time throughout the year. So we still have time. But just to put that on your, your, your yeah. mind real quick. Yeah. A region of 74 to 77 disciples with two baptisms. Mm -hmm. And it makes you wonder, well, are we trained in the basics? Mm -hmm. Are we really applying the basics? Not just reading, but really allowing people sway into our life to teach us, to train us, to really practice true discipleship. Right? Allow people to sway your life. Like everything's on the table. The way you dress, the way you sound, the way you come to church, uh, your timeliness to church, all of that is on the table when it comes to true discipleship. We all signed up to die on the cross. We all signed up to like, hey, give up anything, go anywhere, do anything. So guess what? When I call you to it, don't be surprised. <laughs> you don't need a whole week just to prepare your heart to speak. Like you signed up for that baptism. <laughs> it's true. And I think this is really what it's doing is starting to stunt our growth. Mm -hmm. Because now we're starting to pull back our heart and we can't give and do the things of God because we're not doing the basics. Wow. Yeah. You know, right now is a region we're at negative four growth overall. And a lot of this is not because people are doing a bad job. I'm not saying that. It's just, again, transitions. Beginning of the year, we have to kind of go through a lot of stuff and get organized as a region. Again, people were sent out, so that takes away numbers, mm -hmm. right? And you'll probably wonder, like, why are you talking about numbers? Like, ah, again? Well, we need to talk about numbers sometimes. Yeah. Numbers at least yeah. tell you something. Yeah. They don't tell you everything, but it tells you something. Right? right? Yeah. And honestly, I put a lot of this on myself. As your, as your, as your ministry leader, as your leader, I put this on myself. Come on, bro. I lead the region. Come on, babe. I lead my wife. I lead my family. Come on, Tyree. That's not you guys' fault. I just got to get back to the basics. Mm -hmm. Right? Come on, bro. But here's the thing. I want to call you guys to join me. Yeah. In that. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you guys want to see your Bible talks thrive? Yeah. Yes. I don't know, I don't, let's do it again. Don't you guys want to hear <laughs> and see your Bible talks yeah. thrive? Amen. Yeah. Awesome. Well, join with me in that fight. Let's do the Bible. Let's get back to the basics. Amen. 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 Here's the challenge with that. I want to challenge us to become John 4 disciples. Mm. And what that entails, how did these guys get effective? They applied themselves. It wasn't just slow to learn and th things like that. You, sometimes just, your, your, your leaders shouldn't have to tell you every single time the same thing. Right. And I can be slow to learn sometimes. I need the reminder. Yeah. But I shouldn't be slow to learn to the point where I'm not growing. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Don't be slow to learn. Mm -hmm. Apply yourself. When you go into your, your personal times with your mentors and stuff, really allow your life to be all open book. So you can actually get the help that you need so you can be effective. Mm -hmm. Not just in Dealing with your sin and overcoming it because your, your D-times become like a, a therapy session. It's not a therapy session. It's really just calling you back to the basics, back to the Bible. Right? But then also, if we're going to have thriving Bible talks, we got to apply ourselves through the hard work. we got to work hard. I know we've been working hard, we're tired, but guess what? God's like, hey, I need you to work harder. Because us working hard is not allowing us to see the growth that we want to see. Right? Yeah. We're working hard, but we're not growing. So God's like, hey, I need you to work harder. But here's the thing. I believe we can do this. I believe we can have starving Bible talks. I believe that God can change our perspective when it comes to leading our Bible talks. God can change the people in our Bible talks. Why? Because the Bible says so. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says so. You know, why is this so important? As we conclude, look at Acts chapter 19. Why? Bible talks are so important. It's awesome that we got a chance to see the video. We've seen literally what people's Bible talks are doing all around the globe. It's really inspiring. But look at Paul. Let's look at Paul's Bible talk a little bit. His small group, his small discussion. Look at Acts chapter 19. We're going to pick it up here in verse 8. It says, Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some of them became obstinate. Amen. They refused to believe and publicly maligned the way. So Paul left them 
He took the disciples with them and had discussions daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This went on for two years so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. Here Paul had a small group and he's preaching boldly. He's encouraged. He's the reason why he's preaching boldly because he's spending time with God. And God gave him the faith so he got half faith to give. And he's preaching boldly about the words of God. And how consistent was he at this? It says the Bible, they did this daily. And for some period of time, we can't be those who just like, all right, once a week. It's not going to grow. Your Bible talk. If you just show up once a week, like, all right, it's not going to grow. Our Bible talks all got to buy into this and buy into the scriptures and do the basics really well. And get back to the Bible. Hey, our Bible talks need to be activated every single day. Yes, you have a discussion once a week, but every th throughout, the, throughout the week, the other days, you need to be active. Yeah. You need to be doing something and following up with people ahead of time so that way you can have things prepared. Yeah. You need to be sharing your faith ahead of time so that way you can have visitors. You need to be sharing your faith ahead of time so that way you can have studies. Come on. That's right. Mm -hmm. And look what type of impact this had over a course of a period of time because it's not a one and done thing. And we can't give up just because we didn't see the results we wanted to see. And that's really the difference between someone with faith and no faith. Mm -hmm. The person with faith, they understand even when they don't see the results, they still go believe. Mm -hmm. And that's who we got to be. We got to be those men and women who have faith, even though we don't see the results, maybe in the first week, maybe in the first month. But I guarantee because of the Bible says that over a course of a period of time, guess what? In verse 10 it says, so that all the Jews and Greeks who live in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. Wow. wow. This is how the seven churches of Asia got started. Because of a Bible talk. And that's the impact you Bible talks can have here in the Southland region. You, you're, you're not just influencing those that come to your Bible talk. No, because of you and your boat preaching day in and day out, you cannot just have an impact here in Southland, but literally all across the world. Mm -hmm. We see it in the scripture. Paul and his small group changed the world in his day and age and his generation. Mm -hmm. Jesus, we notice to this day, in his small group, the apostles, the twelve, <laughs> changed their the, 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 the landscape and change the world in their generation. I think in the 21st century, the Southland Bible Talks could do likewise. Yeah. But it's going to take us going back to the basics. It's going to take us having powerful times with God every single day. And it's going to take us having incredible, bold proclamations so we can have some growth. Amen. Amen.